Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie Mandy, and we're here with author January Rain. So hi, thanks for being here. Yay, so glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Of course, we're excited to have you. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just jump right in with the questions. So for people who might be new to you, what type of books do you write? What type of tropes do you like to write? So right now I'm in paranormal, fantasy, romanticy, romance. It's all spicy. Um, my tropes always are faded mates, insta love, the whole one true love thing. Um, the, that's my... That's my favorite trope ever. Um, I did just do enemies to lovers. I'm really bad with tropes. Um, people always ask like, oh yeah, what are, what are your tropes? What do you put? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, you, you, I, you tend to lean, you've got breeding. Breeding's a big trope in your book. Yes. So breeding, <laughs> praise kink. Yeah. Um, I guess pregnancy, but towards the end, like mm -hmm. I don't make it the point in the entire book um but I'm so bad like when I'm when I'm about to write a book I, I'm like I google tropes <laughs> <laughs> normal romance what can I add and it's like oh no I do that but I'm yeah. just so bad at thinking of them I know. but when definitely we... faded mate spicy breeding mm. love breeding love breeding love pink. it's those are my favorites those will always be my the tropes that I will put into my books. Yeah. Tropes are hard sometimes because we have, you know, we write in our reading journals every week and there's a spot for tropes. And even though I've read that book that week, I have to sit there and go, what tropes were in that book? So I get it. Tropes are hard. My agent asked me for tr the tropes of all my books. And I'm like, oh my God, are you trying to that's too much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. She's just like, I just need a few. Mm -hmm. And especially with my novella, like the Carnival of Creeps. Yes, yeah, so I have like, I don't. It's short. Creepy, yeah, I'm like creepy carnivals. There's some spice. That, that's all I can it's, give you. It's, it's like, it's paranormal. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. bad at tropes. But yeah. <laughs> if you like Faded Mate Romance. I do too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how many books do you have out now? Uh, her, hers, damn, cursed, creeps, rare. Eight. I have eight. Um, I think that's wrong. I don't even know. This is, I don't even know anything about myself. <laughs> it's, not okay. snap. <laughs> it's not a pop quiz. I was just curious if I have them all. <laughs> <laughs> don't do well with tests. No, it's something like that. Like eight, nine, something like that. Yeah, you just had um, one come out I, this week, this past week. Yeah, and I forget. Um, I always forget about my little MM novella that I have that's paranormal. It's called okay. Glutton. Okay. Um, Because I don't market that a lot because it was part of an anthology series. And I marketed it then, and then I got the rights back. And with everything else, I kind of forgot about it. But mm -hmm. now I'm really wanting to push it again. So... Gluttony. It's my one MM story that I have. Okay. That yeah. I love. But and all your other work. ones, all your other books are are male female, right? There's no reverse harem or anything. Um, eternally rare is MMF. Okay. But that's that's the closest I'll get. I know a lot of people are wanting an RH from me, but I don't write RH, and I hate to disappoint readers, but. MMF was more than enough for me. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think for authors, you, we all have our, the, our strong things, right? Like our, our strong suits. Like, right. If it's not your thing, there's somebody else that's going to write it out there and you do great with mm -hmm. what you have. So and we all have our things. It's all good. Yeah. I, I, it's, I, I like reading RH. Yeah. Sometimes, and yeah. then sometimes I get really like I get overwhelmed with mm -hmm. all the, and I'm like, okay. yes, yeah, because sometimes I'm overwhelmed easily. So <laughs> when I'm writing my own books. I'm like, wait, where, what? Yeah. Well, I know, like for me, when I read a uh, white choose, they have to be done just right. Otherwise, I get confused on who's who. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and Mandy will read them once in a blue moon, but I have to force her pretty much to do it. 
it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not really. Reverse yeah. terms not really my thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite to read? Uh, I really like Taboo and Age Gap. Oh, Age Gap. I love Age Gap, too. Love age Gap. I have Age Gap in mind, now that I think about it. That's another trope. It's just this paranormal Age Gap. <laughs> the big one in, in, in some of them. Yeah. The big one. Yeah. The big one. Like, what? Yeah, Almost years. They're, they're, uh, I think he's, he's 191. Yeah. And she's, like, I don't think I say her age, but I she's put her in her mid. 20s yeah i was gonna say somewhere in those 20s somewhere yeah. that's quite the yeah. age gap yep yeah, a little bit <laughs> a little bit just a little bit <laughs> yeah so Dobby, no more no more so do you have a favorite book you've written or a favorite character yes eternally cursed is my favorite book and the werewolf in eternally cursed and Will is my favorite character that I've ever written. Um, I, I love Honeysuckles. Like, I love Creed. And I love Rhett and Snapdragons. I really do. Those stories are doing better than I ever dreamed. Mm -hmm. um, but Eternally Cursed, when I wrote it and I got done, I, I looked at my husband and I was like, this is it. This is the This is the story that is going to make my career. Like, I knew it. I felt it. I just knew because I just I loved the character I loved Annual's quote his, his growth his story mm -hmm. um and the female character Rue she's so she's exactly just what he needs uh, and I was just like this is it and it flopped so hard oh. like it it did not do anywhere near what I thought it would do. Mm -hmm. Like I just, cause I really believe that it's just a good story. And I think it's probably the best story I'll ever write. Like ever it, with all the books, even the future books, I have no idea, idea I'll even write about. That's it's my favorite one. And it flopped so hard and it was so disappointing. And it really like discouraged me a lot. Right. I was like, Oh my God, like, what did I do wrong? And I'm thinking, because the series is very intertwined mm -hmm. and because the only one that can truly be read alone is eternally damned. That's right. the only one. Other than that, you need to read in order. Yes. In order to understand the characters and all characters are all throughout the books. It's, you know, plots intertwine. Mm -hmm. So I think that when people get done reading Eternally Damned and they see that Carnival of Creeps is next, they kind of get thrown off that it's not just a vampire series. Yeah. But it's more of a every kind of creature series. Mm -hmm. So I just write whatever creature I want to next. Um, but yeah, Eternally Cursed is my favorite. She's she's thick. She's got 630 pages. Mm -hmm. And I took so much time writing it. Like I didn't hurry. I really took my time and I just let their story flow right. until it ended. And you know, it's got breeding, it's got praise pra ugh, praise kink and sub dom switch dynamics, mm -hmm. like broken hero. It's got all that. And I just knew. And it was so funny because I wrote Honeysuckles just to get a weird idea out of my head. Like that was it. <laughs> but like, those ones, people Like are that different. was it. I was like, I got to get this out of my head. Like it is just rotting my brain. I need to get it out. It's so weird. And I almost decided not to publish it. Like it was all said and done, edited everything. And I was like, I don't think this is going to do well. What if this, like, what if Amazon like takes down my account or something, you know, cause all those nightmare stories mm -hmm. and my editor was like, no, you got to put it out there. You have to do it. And it ended up being honeysuckles that kind of took me off. Yeah. Like it, I was growing slowly and then honeysuckles came out and it blew up. Yep. And I was just like, that's what I expected with eternally cursed. <laughs> <laughs> and now this monster stalker series surpasses my eternally series. Mm -hmm. Like I struggle 
people read eternally damned like i can't keep mm -hmm. eternally damned on my shelf yeah and then after that it's like all the other books are forgotten though yeah so this monster stalker series made me a full-time made me full-time author and you would think that that would be my favorite book i mean they're weird and they're different and i love that about them but like my heart and soul are they're in my eternally series mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i read all of them this year like the your eternally series uh the first couple in the eternally series i haven't finished yet so um and then obviously snapdragons this week and then honeysuckle so uh honeysuckle is actually we just did our mid-year wrap-up and it was on my top 10 for the year so far so i saw that and i was, was like just, oh my god <laughs> that's, that's, that's wild so wild and different and i i loved it and it's funny that that's not the, like those that was just one that you just threw out there and weren't even, wasn't even going to publish and then that's the one that we see like in your reader group that's the one everybody talks about all the time Every, yeah everyone talks about honeysuckles and mm -hmm where the idea came from yeah. and it was so funny the idea came from i was talking with one of my readers who's been with me since the very beginning like when i when i was struggling just to make content about my books like yeah. a long time ago and she was we were talking she was telling me about her experience with a cyber stalker and i ended up i mean everything's fine now she's right. fine um but we were talking about it and i was like I spitballed this idea and originally honeysuckles was supposed to be like a cyber stalker. And then I was like, you know what? I want to keep it paranormal. And so then it just developed into this weird idea of, you know what, let's give the, let's give him a little bit of everything. And so my goal for that series is each character to be a different monster that mm -hmm. maybe you have or haven't seen in the spectrum of paranormal romance. Yeah. Yeah. But I do yeah. like they're all in, they're all interconnected and like, they're all kind of in the same town. Like we saw some mm -hmm. characters in Snapdragons that we would have seen in your other series and you, you see there's other characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is crossover. And I think that that's because, so my world is shallow cove dimensions. Yes. And everything I write, will always be under that world. So it will always be connected in some way, even if it's just so tiny, you don't even notice, mm -hmm. but they'll always be connected to Shallow Cove. Yeah, I like that. I loved in Snapdragons seeing Creed and Storm. Like that was <laughs> hilarious, a little feral child. That was pretty funny. People love Storm. There are they're asking me to get art made of like Creed with the leash. Yes, <laughs> Storm trying to take off. Well, because when keep I, him from flying. When yeah. I was like reading it and, and they pop in and you're talking about how he's climbing all over his dad. Like I'm picturing like a baby just trying to climb up the leg, and then as I get more into, I'm like, oh no, he's like literally legit climbing on his dad, like like a parasite or something. He's, like he's he is a feral animal. That yeah. child. Yeah, Feral. it was awesome. It was it was worth a good laugh. So yeah, Snapdragons was uh, funnier than Honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely not. I, it's got dark themes, but I don't think it's as dark as Honeysuckles. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think it's more. Rhett has a very, he's got a sense of humor. Yeah, and um, Creed doesn't like. He's very straightforward dry he means everything he says mm -hmm. like, i don't like you and someone's like ah, and he's like no i don't don't yeah. laugh i don't like you yeah i'm not trying to be funny that's creed yeah yeah that you know he would never he wouldn't say something like that yeah Rhett feels like yeah. very different. Yeah. a little more humanity left in him than yeah. Creed. yeah definitely definitely yeah all right what you got next mandy um, where would you recommend starting for somebody who is new to your books? I definitely recommend, well, it depends on their triggers. If you have no triggers at all, I definitely recommend Honeysuckles if you like dark and weird. Um, but if you like more traditional spice, traditional paranormal, I recommend starting with Eternally Damned. 
And people are always really surprised that I don't say eternally hers because it's the introduction novella. But I think it's better to read Eternally Damned first and then to go back and read Eternally Hers because then I feel like you have an appreciation of the story first. Because Eternally Hers, it's quick. It's like 90 pages, backstory, but it leads straight into Eternally Damned. Yeah. And Eternally Hers is also not my favorite, personally. Um, it's not my favorite. Um there are a few things I would change about it if I ever had the time. But the one thing I know won't, wouldn't change would be the ending. And that's what people hate. Of course. <laughs> of course. But the ending would never change no matter what. But mm -hmm. I, to, to, you don't need that backstory to understand or appreciate Eternally Damned. No. Um, the success that Eternally Damned has had with it really being my first novel is insane. Like that and Honeysuckles are my best sellers. Mm -hmm. And like on TikTok shop, you know, I can put up 60 copies of Damned and they're sold out in 24 hours. Like I can't keep it on my shelf. And I'm like, this is wild. Yeah. Like I can't believe this, but it's still it sales more than any other book. Mm -hmm. That could be my fault because I don't market the other books very hard because I'm, I hope that eternally damned would, will lead them to the other books. Mm -hmm. And then I get, if I market eternally cursed first and they're like, well, do I have to read an order? I'm always like, yeah. And then, you know, People don't, I feel like people don't like to go back. Mm -hmm. Like they just want to read that one. Yeah. And, um, which I've had a few people read Eternally Rare first or Eternally Cursed. And they're like, it was fine. Like I, there was no issue. Um, but I definitely recommend Eternally Damned. If you're mm -hmm. more traditional paranormal romance kind of person, more mainstream, I would say that series is. Mm -hmm. than honeysuckles but oh, like if you yeah. want to <laughs> dive in you know no worries about what you just read and you want to have a wtf moment definitely the monster stalker series <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's one of those where you're like am i into this oh yeah no i'm into this i'm into this yeah yeah it was it it's so funny. I get comments on TikTok like, you need therapy. You need help. And it's just like, you don't think I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Call the fiction for a reason, people. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey, no bark. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Barking up the mailman. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Are you able to share um, what you're currently working on or any upcoming books? Yes. Yeah, so... As of this moment, I'm not writing anything because I just got done with Snapdragons and I tend to take a break from typing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll get back to it. Oh, I'll probably need to get back to it sometime next week. I've taken like a week off and mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to get back to it. Um, Eternally Lost will be next. It releases in September. That will be Ann Will's brother's story. Okay. So if you've read Eternally Rare, you know what happens with his brother. And we're finally going to go into his story. And then um, after that, I have a shared world with other authors that I'm doing. I'm really excited for that. Like the idea that I have is, I feel like it, it, I got to do it right. But I feel like it's really great. Um, we'll also be paranormal. And then the third book. For the Monster Stalker series, I have planned for release in December. Okay. I'm hoping to get it done earlier, but I just don't want to pressure myself. Um, I used to be a much quicker writer, mm -hmm. and I'm just not anymore. Um, with all the writing I've done in the last, like, six years, I'm just, I'm finding myself slowing down a lot. Mm -hmm. So it takes me longer. Yeah. Well, if it's December, then Merry Christmas to us. We'll get the next weirdo. So, and she will be female. 
the, the monster this time will be female. And the hero will be somebody we've already met? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 That's all I'm giving. <laughs> I mean, I've got if, suspicion. I more, if I say any more, I'm going to spill the whole book. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I've got suspicions. It's all good. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Yay. Nothing says Christmas like weird stuff. Right? Yeah. Put a little bow on it. <laughs> <laughs> so... How do you come up with these ideas? For the monster series? For any of them, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I ask myself that all the time. <laughs> like, so for um for honeysuckles, it was very much a brainstorming back and forth with my editor. I'm like, I'm thinking about this. Um and my editor is more like my partner. She does my covers. She does everything for me. Um, we're a really great team. And so when I'm stuck, I always message her and brainstorm. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking this for Creed. And I want him to be a DNA experiment. But I want it to be unique in the sense of he's not a regular shifter. Like, I need him to be more than that. And I was sitting here and, like, there's some really weird moments in the book, like, you know, with the perfume mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. And I remember just sitting here at the desk or wherever I'm writing. And I'm like, and it was the same thing with Red and Snapdragons. I'm like, what's the weirdest thing you can think of to put into this book? Like the weirdest thing. Let's do it. Do so it. sometimes I'm just sitting here and I'll, and then what's important to me is, is that it's not too repetitive because yeah. obviously with series like this, it's, there are going to be things that are similar. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like no matter what, I can't escape that because of the base of what it is. Um, so I just sit here and I'm like, okay, well, I had Creed do this. So what could I have Rhett do? That's not the same, right. but it will make readers be like, what, wait, what did I just read and go back and read it? Mm -hmm. So really it's just me sitting here thinking of really weird, nasty things. <laughs> and I'm like, is that too much? It is. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I and without giving too much away, but um, while reading Snapdragons this week, I went out and told my he was at my husband's in the kitchen. And I was like, okay, so let me tell you about this body wash situation. And my husband was like, hmm, not a bad idea. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it is a bad idea. And you know, I can't remember. Maybe I did. I'm gonna have to go back. So what's funny is when I'm done writing a book, I tend to black out and I like don't remember anything. Like when I, I remember some things, but because I get so my, like it's all yeah. I think about the entire time I'm writing it, even when I'm taking a break that when I'm done, it's like, I close my laptop and I'm, I'm like, wait, what did I just write? Mm -hmm. I can't remember anything. And I don't even think Rhett told her about the body wash. I don't think he did. Uh -uh. And I did that intentionally because he didn't want her to know about it. Right. He right. wants her to keep being oblivious so she always smells like him. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I don't think he did. Mm -mm. That'll be a secret he takes to his grave. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So what do you like to do in your free time? Free time. What's that? <laughs> Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, it's so hard because especially doing this I mean I remember doing it part time and I was working on top of doing this mm -hmm. I had no free time and now now that I do it full time I still don't have a lot of free time because you have the full time of social media stuff and then there's full time of actually writing and working. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to balance 
the work-life balance, even working from home. Um, like I have, I've been packing orders in between everything because we have a guest visiting us and it's really hard to find time, especially when you have a guest mm -hmm. and it's, I feel so bad because people are waiting for their orders and they're just like, I'm doing the best I can. I'm a one woman show. Like it's me rapping. Like mm -hmm. I sign them all. I do it all. And, um, but when I do have free time, my husband and I really mm -hmm. love to go to concerts. We love concerts, uh, brunch. Mm -hmm. I, I obviously, when I have the time, I really love to read. Um, take our dogs for a walk. We love getting the opportunity to be outside. So like he's, he likes hiking. I'm not a hiker. Um, I mean, I get it. It's worth it when you get to where you're going. <laughs> I'm not a hiker. The journey um, there. No, it's not so much. Journey. The journey is not for me, <laughs> but I like, I do enjoy kayaking, swimming, amusement parks. Like we have season passes to Darien Lake, which is the um, amusement park like half hour away and it's a water park and it's got roller coasters I love that I love roller coasters so it's summer here in Buffalo which will probably last like two seconds mm -hmm. before it starts snowing again right. and but yeah I mean I think I mean we love bowling we love activities when we get to do them yeah and it's really hard for me to find the time and I'm just, because it takes me so long to write something these days that sometimes I feel like it takes me all day just to write a chapter when mm -hmm. before I used to pump out four chapters because before I did this I was a ghostwriter okay so it was I was writing two books a month for my clients I was mm -hmm. on top of it and then I quit and I've re I realized that I was just doing what I needed to do to survive, to put food on the table. And now, you know, luckily it's not like that anymore. And so mentally I'm like really tired, I'm really burnt out. Um, so I don't pressure myself into writing a lot or writing fast, but I do need to be better at it because I do want to, do more things mm -hmm. and it's definitely a learning I'm doing my best not to get trapped into this survival mode thing that I've had for six years <laughs> yeah you definitely don't want to get to where you're just burned out and can't write at all yeah so. so that's why I haven't I stopped when snapdragons was done I was like I'm not writing a word mm -hmm. like I, I want to take the rest of the month off but I don't know how that will go with the rest of my rest of the year if I do that yeah, like I'm already pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. Does your husband make you go to football games? So we want to go to football games. We went to one last year. I mean, they're not. The new cheap. stadium, apparently it's like really expensive because my husband's cousins have like season tickets or seats or whatever. And it, the price is just insane now. So we're on the season ticket list because we want season tickets to go. But. The wait list is, I mean, until 2026. Ah, it's nuts. So right now, I, I I can't believe I didn't say this when you asked me what I like to do on my free time. <laughs> Baseball game. We have a AAA team here in Buffalo called the Buffalo Bisons. And um, they're away right now. But when they're home and they're playing, we're always going to the games. Yeah. We just sit there. I have a beer watch the game. I mean, do I know a lot about baseball? No, no, I don't, but it's fun. It's, yeah. and it's, it's fun to do with my husband. It gives us time together and it's a wonderful way just to enjoy the day and enjoy the sun, mm -hmm. which I do not get enough of at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At all. Uh, my father-in-law used to go and watch them. He passed away a few years ago, but that was, he would go watch the baseball games. He was in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. You know, I didn't know him all that well. So, I mean, I did and I didn't, but, you know. Yeah, yeah it's uh, the, the baseball games are so fun. And there's mm -hmm. the hockey. 
We have the hockey team, the Buffalo Sabres. What mm -hmm. did I just I don't know what's happening. <laughs> um, I, it's because everything, there we go. It's flipped. Yeah. Everything's off. Oh, <laughs> um, but I love hockey games. I don't like watching them on TV. It's something you have to go to because it is so much better live. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It is. I love the hockey games. And we when went we were, to when we were in Anchorage, game. we would go. Sorry. They're so fun. Yeah. And when we went to the Buffalo Bills game, it was still really cold. Yeah. And we were talking about getting season tickets. And I was like, you know, like there, when it's snowing a lot and there are fans that will sit in like four feet of snow mm -mm. to watch them play. And I'm like, that's not me. No. <laughs> No, I no. will watch warm from my couch when it's snowing. <laughs> yep, I'll let my husband watch, and then he and Mandy actually talk back. Like they'll message or call each other, and I just sit there and read because I could. No. Yeah, it's. I've learned a lot about baseball. <laughs> my husband is a huge baseball fan. Um, yeah. I didn't know much about it until recently, and now I just think it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. So the baseball games are definitely one of the things I enjoy doing the most during the summer because it's a way to get me outside and it's very chill and low key still because you're sitting there and you're having a good time. You don't have to worry about socializing with anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> low pressure, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So who are some of your favorite authors or favorite books that you have that you've loved? Oh, man, that is always so hard because <laughs> it's been so long since I've read <laughs> that the real only memories of <laughs> the authors I've read recently are probably from years ago. But I did read. Oh, get back. Don't. Oh my God. Hold on. It's okay. Here, take it. I have two dogs and one, the other one wants to take the ball from him and the other one's growling. Right. If I don't take care of it now, it's just going to be, be a thing. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, I, so for a while I got into audiobooks last mm -hmm. year and it's because I had a crazy drive to take my son to school. And, um, I, so I ended up getting audiobooks to help pass the time. And um, God, what is that series? It's Joe Abernathy. Okay. Joel, wait, hold on. I have it. I don't want to, I don't want to get it wrong. Right. Because it would be so rude. Um, <laughs> library. And it goes to show how I have no idea how to work anything. Okay. <laughs> it's because I, I don't do enough. Okay. Yeah, Joel Abernathy. And it's an M.M. Shifter romance. Mm -hmm. And the first book is called Exhale. Okay. I don't know the series name. It doesn't say. It just says an M.M. Shifter romance. Okay. But oh my God, it was so good. I was so invested in that story. There's angst, there's emotion, there's love. Um, and then another MM romance that I loved was Lane is Lane Hayes. This uh the script club series. Oh, it's so it's nerd jock. Oh, okay. And I'm a sucker for nerd jock. Like <laughs> Oh my God. I So MM romance, mm -hmm. by far my most favorite thing to read ever. Like when I started, when I quit ghostwriting and I was like, okay, I'm going to write for myself. I think I can do this. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it because I want to write for me. I don't want to write mm -hmm. for other people anymore. Right. Um, and I debated on diving into MM and only writing MM. And, um, I was like, well, if I do that, then I don't want to pigeonhole myself. So it's actually why I created Shallow Cove Dimensions. I created this world so I can write whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I am going to have an MM series. And I actually set it up in my book, Gluttony. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, those audiobooks. So I didn't haven't read the paperbacks for Lane Hayes or Joel Abernathy, but they're on my list to buy. But the audiobooks are so good, the both of them. Like um Joel Abernathy, the narrator does, I believe it's a Russian accent. And it's phenomenal. It is so good. And the script club series, like the nerds kind of have this like nerdy accent about it. Like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and the dogs sound like super jockey. Mm -hmm. And it's at first I was like a little thrown by it. But then once you listen to it all and you're invested in the series, it's it's so good. It's mm -hmm. so good. And um, another audio book that I absolutely love is Midnight in Bayou by Nora Roberts. Mm -hmm. That was the first audio book I've ever tried. And it was, oh my God, I was addicted. Like I only bought it for my drive to New Orleans and it was so good. They do, a, um, he does a Cajun accent. Oh, I was so invested. But then there's, <laughs> So besides audiobooks, there's Cleo Evans, Love Cleo, with her Creature Cafe series. It is my comfort series. It's my go-to when I... My dog. Hey, no more. No bark. If their father were home, they wouldn't do it. They don't listen to me. My go-to um, because their father is home. So... Mm -hmm. Ashley Bennett. She's got the cutest, like, fluffy monster series ever. If you just want to feel good, comfort, light romance, and with mm -hmm. monsters, like, definitely read her stuff. Love her stuff. Um, I'm a big Anne Rice fan. Uh, the Wolf Gift. Love that book. Oh, love that book so much. Um, there's probably more. Oh, um, I don't know if I'm saying her name right. This is more of a young adult series, and her name is Renee Ade. Okay. I don't think I'm saying her last name right. Um, but she writes, it's the first book is called The Damned, and it is a vampire romance quartet, I believe. I don't have the fourth book. Um, and it is so good. It's so good. Very minimal spice, really minimal, but all of the books. Now, this was the first time I ever read anything like this different um povs and some povs are from third person some are first person like it goes back and i didn't think that could work but then i'm invested i'm like three books in so well, there you go yeah yeah so do you have so the first two books in your eternally damned world there are on audio do you have plans for any more books on audio I do. So Eternally Hers and Eternally Damned. So the Eternally series is with Tantra Media. Mm -hmm. I sold my audiobook rights to them. Okay. Because I never intended to do audiobooks ever because they're expensive to mm -hmm. produce. And I didn't know when I would have that kind of money. Right. And I don't, I don't know, even if I ended up having that kind of money, I don't know if I would have ever seen myself doing audiobooks. Um, so when Tantor Media came to me and was like, hey, we want to buy your audio rights, I was like, uh, okay, okay because yeah. I never planned on doing it. So mm -hmm. I don't know when Carnival of Creeps or Eternally Cursed will be on there yet. Um, they they do well updating me, but since Eternally Damned just released, I'm going to assume it's going to be a little while longer. Right. Um, I do have a narrator in mind. For honeysuckles, which I would have to do on my own. I'm going to do a Kickstarter to help with that. Hopefully it gets funded because I don't mm -hmm. know how it works. I don't know any of that. I've never done a Kickstarter, but right. the narrator I have in mind, I'm just waiting for his email to see if we can like schedule a video call or something, but he's such a perfect creed and I'm so excited. And I hope that he's interested and I know he's so busy, but I'm just like waiting for the email back. And I'm like, please email me. Don't forget about me. <laughs> I, I need you. <laughs> I need to. But I don't know when. I don't know when honeysuckles will ever be. I don't know. I don't have a a date. I don't. My goal was to have it done this year. I don't see that happening. Um. 
but it's been requested a lot. Yeah, I can see that. And but it's so much money. Oh, I know it's very expensive. So much, yeah, so much. So it's definitely it's on my list to do, and I need to create the Kickstarter. I was supposed to do that on my time off, but again, doing the work stuff after I finish writing is so hard. Like mm -hmm. I really just needed a break. Yeah. Understand. So, yeah. I'll keep everyone updated in my newsletter and in my Facebook group and Instagram. I'm typically pretty good at communicating to my readers. Mm -hmm. um, so when I know more, definitely they will know more. Perfect. All right. What you got, Mandy? So are we going to see you at any author signings? Yes. So I was at... Readers Take Denver. I made it out alive. Um, <laughs> I was there. And um, <laughs> it was my first signing ever. Oh. Ever in my life. And it was amazing. It was amazing in the sense of, I cannot believe how many readers came up to me wanting their book signed. Right. I was blown away. At one point I had two lines and I got really confused. I was like, are you, are you guys here for me? <laughs> like, I was thinking like maybe they thought they were in a line for someone else or something. Cause I'm not a big name. I'm not, I'm not a big name. And they're like, yeah, we're here for you. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I felt so giddy. <laughs> but, um, so next I have a signing plan for next year. But because they haven't announced yet, the authors, I'm not going to announce it yet. Um, I'm trying to think of the other one, if they've done the announcement. I have two next year. Mm -hmm. They haven't announced yet, so I'm not going to. But okay. one is here in the U.S. and the other one is international. Okay. So... I tried to get into one, maybe I was looking for one later this year and I couldn't find any and it was too late, I think. Yeah, a lot of them. And I, yeah, they, they fill up quick. And yeah. like, I was really interested in doing one later this year, but I couldn't, I couldn't find any. And maybe, you know, if someone's watching this and they hear this part, like, I am looking for a late 2024 signing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get back to me. <laughs> Exactly. Because there's always but, cancellations at these things too, but I think there's always wait lists as well. So Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's another thing. It's I'm really interested in doing one more this year. I don't think it will happen. And next year will be hard for me to do more because the international trip is going to be so expensive. Yeah. So and then out of the year after that, I have another international trip. Like it's wild. I'm like, wow, I get to travel. Like I I've never <laughs> I've never been outside of the U.S. besides Canada because we're 20 minutes away from Canada. Same. Like we were there yesterday. Yeah, I, I'm literally on the border. Like I have a kid in Canada for the weekend because her friend that she's hanging out with, the parents are split. Mom lives in Canada. Dad lives here. And we're just minutes. Like I can see Canada out my bedroom window. So wait, where do you live? Blaine, Washington. So I'm on the border. The piece wow. Of oh, you're so on the other side. You're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right there oh, on the border. It's so pretty over there. Yeah, it's pretty. It's so pretty. It's day, it's, but yeah. We're yeah. 20 minutes from the border and we're about an hour and a half away from Toronto. Right. So the past two days, we've been to Niagara Falls. We went to the U.S. side and we went on Made in the Mist. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boat that takes you down on the by the actual falls, you get soaked. It was awesome. It was a great experience <laughs> um, to be that close mm -hmm. to something so massive and killer. Like it yeah. can kill you. Yes. So it's a thrill and you're like, oh my God, if I fall out of this boat, I'm done. Yeah. Like, you know, there's no hope. No. Um, but then we went to the Canadian side and the Canadian side so much better to see the falls, to see all of it. You mm -hmm. can't really get it on the U.S. side, so you have to go to the Canadian side. Right. And it was a lot of fun. We went to the Wax Museum and all that stuff. And, um, wait, I'm to, I get really bad on tangents. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> Did I answer it? I don't know. I'm just going. <laughs> it's 
funny. I know when we were talking about going to Buffalo, because it's where my husband's from a while back. And I was like, okay, but what would we do there? And he's like, go to Niagara Falls. I was like, but what else would we do there? And he's like, go to Canada? Yeah, so I will say that's the only thing that comes up when you search Buffalo. Like, what to do in Buffalo when it's going to Niagara Falls? There's so much to do in Buffalo that you really need to talk to locals about Mm -hmm. because the internet's just going to tell you to go see Niagara Falls, which absolutely definitely go see it. Like that's something anyone should do. And then you should, you should pay for the tour. You should do the touristy thing because Mm -hmm. you can go down to like cave of the winds and it takes you like right underneath the falls and you can feel like the water hurts when it hits you. Because it's coming, it's right there. It's coming down. Mm -hmm. So it's an amazing experience. I highly recommend doing it. But there's so much more to do in Buffalo. Like we have a whole canal side full. And it's in summer, full of concerts. You know, there's kayaking. There's zip lining. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff to do. So much. And in winter, it's hard. But Mm -hmm. then it turns into snowboarding and skiing and all that stuff. Yeah. There's so many hiking trails. Like there's some, there's one in Chestnut Ridge called um, the Eternal Flame. And Mm -hmm. you basically, you hike until you see there's a natural flame in like a small cave. That's, it's always flaming. (laughs) It's always flaming. (laughs) But it's, but it's natural. Uh Like it's, and I, it's really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, but there's so much to do in Buffalo. I mean, Niagara Falls is the big one. Yeah, I definitely do. Made in the Mist, definitely do that. When you're on the boat, get up front if you are all about just wanting to get wet and experience the falls, you know, yeah. on you. That was me. I got absolutely soaked, and it was <laughs> the best time ever. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you want to share before I ask our last question? Um, I do have a surprise for next year. Um, I will be writing a dark contemporary romance series, which is actually what I was a ghostwriter for, for like five years. So, um, I am jumping genres, I guess, dare, dare I do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm really excited about it. I already have the first cover. It's going to be the cover reveal is going to be this year. Um, I'm really excited about it. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm going to put it up for pre-order soon. Okay. And it's going to be it's going to be dark, but it's not going to be as dark as the Monster Stalker series. It'll have dark, dark themes, but like <laughs> it won't have non-con or any of that. Like it, it won't have that. But super excited about it. Um mm-hmm. I guess the, I guess that's the only real announcement that I have. Um, I have Mandy. uh, Mandy. She's probably getting a phone call. No, she'll pop back in. Hold on. Yeah. Have you done the flame thingy? You know what she's talking about? Yeah. Yeah. He knows. Okay. Where are you going? Okay. All right. Never mind. Forget I asked. Hello? There, oh, there she is. Wow. That was so frustrating. A stupid spam call. I thought I had it silenced, so I don't know what happened. Oh, it's okay. Stinking spam call. But I yes. trying to think of a... Uh... I guess that, that's the big announcement. And it's like all I have not to like just show the cover. Oh, my I kid know. gets so annoyed with me because sometimes I just drop things in my group. She's like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> we got a plan. That's how it'd be for me. I, I, It's hard for me to keep a secret when I'm really excited about something. Yeah. I'm, I'm itching to show this cover. Like there's a, there are two covers. There's discreet and there's not discreet. And I'm like biting at the bit. I'm like, oh, I need to show everyone. <laughs> really want to show it 
Yeah, it will happen. It will happen soon because I won't be able to wait, and my PA has to listen to me. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what is the best way for readers to connect with you? Definitely my reader group, uh, January's Rainstormers on Facebook. Um, I do have a Discord. It's called January Rains Rainstormers. Um, I'm doing my best to be more active on that. It's really hard keeping track of so many different socials. But right now, the best way is my Facebook reader group. I am super active there. I give random details of what I'm doing, my life, funny things, updates on books, characters. Like I always post there first. Yeah. Always. So that is the one way to get the best information. Even with newsletters, like I need to be better at my newsletter. I <laughs> might send a newsletter every six weeks. And I know that I guess that's not good, but it's so time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so time consuming. And I just I do need to be better at it. But then another part of me is like, does anyone even open these anyway? Like mm -hmm. I don't know. I get discouraged with newsletters. I get super discouraged with them. I feel like no one reads them. So. I read them. One of us reads them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely my reader group. And heck, if you want to email me, I will get back to you quickly. Um, at least I think it's quick, probably within three days. But yeah. Yeah. I love talking. I love communicating with my readers. They're the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the reason why I get to do this full time. They're the reason why I get to live my dream. It's insane. Especially exactly. with, so with Honeysuckles, when that book released and TikTok was better. Mm -hmm. I had, during release week, I had two viral videos of Honeysuckles during release week. Which is crazy. So it got me to top 40 on Amazon with honeysuckles. And it was wild. So with Snapdragons, I got really nervous because I was like, oh my God, like it, what if it flops? Like mm -hmm. I was so scared it was going to flop. And it ended up being the second best release I've ever had besides honeysuckles. I didn't have any viral videos or anything. And I still got to the top 200 in the store. Like mm -hmm. it's phenomenal to me. And then I ended up having three best number bestseller tags for it and a top new release tag i was like whoa crazy. people are really wanting this book like this is crazy mm -hmm. like like eternally rare came out and that flopped so bad it flopped i mean i know people people read the eternally series but i'm really worried that i'm going to have to cut it short just because that, well, hopefully the readers that are reading Honeysuckles and Snapdragons will now go read those mm -hmm. because they are good and they are, they are worth reading. So. I um, thank you. They are. I feel like I mean, that's where, since that's where the Monster saying. Soccer series came out, mm -hmm. I feel like the Eternally series has kind of been forgotten in a way. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is so, because I love that series. Mm -hmm. Like. It's, I feel like the Monster Stalker series is more of like this guilty pleasure project of mine. Whereas the Eternally series is like what I'm working towards. Like what, does that make sense? Like it's, it's my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, I just feel like it's been a little, it's been a little forgotten and I'm really hoping that people find it and they read it because mm -hmm. I really believe in the stories. Like I think they're solid. I think they're good, fun, imaginative stories and I can't wait to write the next one. And I'm just really nervous that that one's going to flop too. Right. Right. And hopefully having audio for those two will help promote them a little bit more too. Cause then you get into a different group of people. Yeah. I'm hoping, I don't even know how well eternally damned did with audio because I don't, I don't have those numbers, so I have right. no idea, right. but I need to, <laughs> rude, I'm on a call, you can wait, <laughs> but, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping so, I know that Eternally Damned was requested a lot on audio, so now that it's out, hopefully people go to it, I hope that 
the other books arrived quickly on Audible because it took them a whole year yeah. after Eternally Hers to get Eternally Damned out. And I messaged them. I was like, you know, I understand. I said, but people aren't wanting to read or listen to just Eternally Hers. Right. Because it how it ends. If they want to read the next book, at least with Eternally Damned out, they could listen to those two and really be done. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yeah. besides the other books, um, yeah. you know, it could really be done. But <laughs> no more, Bobby. No, no more. <sighs> um, yeah, because I listened to Eternally Hers well over a year ago. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just wait until the audio comes out for Eternally Damned. And it didn't, and it didn't. And then I was like, all right, I'm just going to read yeah. it. Which I physically read it, and I physically read it all the time. So that's fine. I was like, well, if there's audio, then we'll wait for the rest. Right. But I couldn't wait. But yeah, I kind of, I emailed my person, and I was like, hey, like, do we have a date yet? Like, mm-hmm. what's going on? And I know it takes time. Like, I yes. totally get that. But I wanted to update my readers. Yeah. Because a lot of them were asking for it. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. yeah. Audiobook narrators are busy. I guess it takes quite a while. It does. So the person I'm communicating with now for Honeysuckles, mm-hmm. he is, he's so good. He's so perfect for Creed. Like I messaged him last week, I think, and I'm still mm-hmm. waiting. And I'm like, please message me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't want to be annoying and like spam you, but I will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because yep. he's too, he's perfect. He's perfect for the voice of Creed. Yeah, I would love to. I, I'm anxious for that. I mean, I know it's going to take some time, but yeah. I was on a, I don't know if anyone saw, but I, I did do a live with him and a few readers. And he did read a few sentences from Honeysuckles. And it was phenomenal. It was so good. And he read the blurb. Like he kept it. We, we didn't dive into the book or anything yeah. like that. But like when he read the blurb and like a small paragraph, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is the guy. This yeah. is this is the guy. So that's awesome. just waiting for that. Yeah, I'm really excited. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on with us. We had a great time with you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. So much fun. I hope I didn't go off into tangents too much. I'm really bad at that. That's all good. You're good. No, you're fine. So thanks to all of you guys who watched this. Thanks to everybody out there. We'll see you in the next video.